Welcome. This is Power Trading Radio Live, fueled by Online Trading Academy. For more information, visit powertradingradio.com. Now, here's your host, Merlin Rothfeld. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Power Trading Radio. I'm Merlin Rothfeld with you for your Wednesday edition. Happy Hump Day, everybody. Hope you had a great midpoint to your trading week. For those of you who are bullish on these markets, it's just the same old song remains the same. All-time highs for most of the major market indexes, except the Russell, which we talked about yesterday and gave some explanation as to why that is. But all in all, a very nice day out there for your major market indexes. Now, normally we start the show off by going over our major market indexes, but I want to do a special announcement here. You can see I got a little, I got, I got a little pin here. It says, join the fight. Uh, yes, a fight is on. A fight is brewing. We need uh, all the Online Training Academy graduates help. Maybe some of you might not know what that fight entails yet. I would encourage you to go to a webinar today that Al Shahar will be hosting. You can find out more information by going to My OTA, which conveniently enough, TJ is going to show you exactly where to go on your screen here. So TJ, if you wouldn't mind, bring up My OTA, the dashboard there for anybody who's an Online Training Academy student. You go to your dashboard. We have all your resources and your classes and all the supporting information. You can also see your XLTs and all that other good stuff. On the right-hand side, scroll down a little bit and you see you're invited to an important webinar. We did uh, three of these last week. There was one this morning, which was very heavily attended. There is one more happening tonight. That is at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's about three hours from right now. I would encourage you to join that. Al Shahar will be making some very special announcements as well as unveiling some new things uh, with regards to Click. I'm sure a lot of you will be very excited about some of the features and functionality that they're rolling out here very, very soon. So uh, go and to my OTA, sign up for that one. Make sure you attend that one and help us join this fight that we are just about to embark on. All right, uh, that's it for that little bit of an announcement. And of course, we'll have more information for everybody else as the days progress on what that fight exactly is. So. Let's start things off with our top seven markets out there. Out of the seven, normally there's kind of a give and take. Some are positive, some are negative. Today, we had just one negative, everything else positive. Again, this kind of break from tradition where historically we have equity indexes moving up and commodity prices moving down. Didn't really see that today. Gold will be our weakest performer, which we will start off with there. TJ will bring us up the uh, GC charts we want to look at. Go to, uh, uh, which, which screen are we on here? There we go. There's my futures one. Go to gold. Start things off with gold, which is your worst performer. When I say worst, it's not like it was a, a horrifically bad or anything. It was just ever so slightly down. 0.08%. It dropped $1.20 per ounce of gold right there. You can see the formation. Nothing really that exciting given where it was. Really feels like just consolidation here. Those ranges are getting smaller and smaller and smaller over the past couple of weeks. Right now, gold sitting at $1,568.90. Well, actually, that's what it closed at. It's actually up just a little bit, which technically would put it into positive territory on the day. But when I read these numbers, well, when I wrote them down, we were in negative territory. So we'll just, we'll keep it there. We'll say we had one negative one and six positive. We'll start things off with our indexes. S&P 500 was up 0.65%. Again, a similar picture. I actually was really looking forward to some downside movement here today. I'll walk you through as we progress how I would have traded this one if it did what I thought it was going to do, which it did not. It basically just continued to rally in the after-hour session, making an all-time high. You guys can see that this huge big green candle finishing at the highs of the day, also a very positive sign. 0.65% uh, gain for the S&P 500, up over 21 points to 3,379. And you can see right now we're at 3,382, so we're up another three points in the after-hour session. The improbable seems to be continuing to the upside. No change in sight there. All right, Russell 2000 was your next one. That was surprisingly fifth place is 0.71% gain. So you know there's some good stuff coming here. Russell 2000 was up to 1,689 on the session. That's where it's at right now. So no big moves up. Uh, what's interesting about the move, remember we talked about questions from viewers. I believe that was on Monday asking if this would be a supply zone that would hold. I said, I don't really think so. Uh, I feel like this last attempt here that we saw on the 6th of February er erased most of whatever supply was remaining there. So it looks to me like this is going to be a, a positive move back. I and mean, we may see the Russell 2000 all-time highs here soon. As it stands today, it was fifth place, a 0.71. All right, NASDAQ. Now we go to the NASDAQ 100 futures. Song remains the same. You guys see that huge, basically just continuing on that great trajectory that we started really back in October of 2019. Hasn't broken that trend really at all. Composite was up 0.9% today, a gain of 87 points to 9,700. And six, uh, 25. Oh, I got my numbers all dyslexic out there today. All right, that was your fourth place finisher, NASDAQ Composite. That brings us to 
The next one, Bitcoin, I need to refresh this one because those numbers are going to be slightly off. It was up 1.2% today, which put it into third place, podium time. Uh, you'll notice right now it's at 10371 on the day for Bitcoin, a gain of $122 per coin or 1.2%. Uh, what's nice about this for anybody who's in that crypto space, if you look at the chart here at the bottom over the last 24 hours, what's nice is it wasn't like a sharp, aggressive spike. It was really just kind of slowly trending and slowly building and going all day. So that was, uh, for me, kind of a, an important piece. I like when things trend slowly as opposed to have a big uh, parabolic spike because normally those parabolic spikes get retraced. This looks pretty nice and just kind of steady, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, over the course of the day. So that's your Bitcoin, which was your bronze medal. Number three, we move from there back to click and go to the 10-year Treasury note yet again. The yield all over the place lately. It's really just been ping pong balling. Right now, you're up 2.52% on the yield, back above that 160 mark to 1.63 on the yield for that 10-year. And of course, when that happens, you're seeing the 10-year Treasury note futures drop in price as we see today. Again, really going all the way back into, let's call it the 27th of January, we've had these wide ranges which seem to be becoming more and more compressed. That's uh, generally a good sign. When prices compress, then we get to see another big breakout uh, in the, normally in the previous direction of the previous trend, which in this case would be up for that 10-year, which means we would probably see those yields continue to drop. And I think that's pretty much what the expectation is. All right, so that was second place, up 2.53%. But that pales in comparison to crude oil, which came screaming out of that double bottom we talked about yesterday. Nice follow through. Now comes the real test. Does it get above those highs we saw four days ago? TJ, zoom in so we can explain what those four days ago highs are. Uh, you're looking to the highs on February 6th of uh, 5220. If you get above 5220, you really have a lot of smooth sailing. I don't see anything substantial from a supply side here until we get to right around 60 bucks. So that could be a big move out there for crude oil. Double bottom in formation, to, uh, we talked about yesterday. A nice follow through on today's session. So hopefully some of you caught on that crude oil trend. I did not. I've been too busy building content. At some point, I'm going to have to stop building content here and just trade. Uh, you saw crude oil at $51.68. It's up five cents in the after hour session, which put it up three. 0.48% on the day, making it by far your best performer out there. So all in all, a pretty nice day for anybody who is long. Hopefully some of those top seven markets put some green onto your screen. All right, uh, I have a lot of questions about different asset classes out there today. I have a few on Forex, so I'll probably spend a bit on uh, Forex as we progress. That was some of the more breaking news as far as uh, macroeconomic announcements. We didn't have too much. We had crude oil inventories, which actually came out way bigger than expected. We were uh, expecting it to go from 3.4 million to 3.1, so a contraction a little bit in the supply. Actually jumped out at 7.5 million barrels this week. That's a pretty big increase. You would think that that would have a negative impact on the price of crude oil. It did not. We saw that. So that, again, you can't really trade specifically off this economic data. That's why we always emphasize price being the more important piece here. Uh, that would have probably saved you on that one. The other piece was noteworthy. Uh, we talked about the the ten the um, the ten year yields right now 1.62. Again, if we go back a week, you're looking at uh, or sorry back a month, you're looking at 1.87. So we've seen this yield drop, 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 drop. Again, negative interest rates are something that's on everybody's radar right now, and maybe a potential uh, reality if this market comes into a recession. I think that's probably what you're going to see happen. We'll go negative if we hit a recession. Uh, otherwise, macroeconomics. I'm looking through my list here. Don't see anything noteworthy. Uh, last night we did have New Zealand come out with a rate announcement, which they said we're staying right where we're at. Not too much deviation there on that chart. Uh, tonight, after hours, you did have some earnings announcements. You had Cisco report earnings, who was slowly drifting down. That may have a little bit of a drag on the indexes, although judging by the reaction, markets are absolutely just shrugging off any bad news and just going because, hey, coronavirus is fixed, trade war is done, and uh, you know the markets are all going to go to 50 million uh, all-time highs. So right now they're shrugging that off. CME was also down in the after hours. Uh, Shopify, Larry Jacobson's pick from his portfolio, he's been talking about for a couple years now, that was actually showing some pretty nice performance to the upside on their earnings announcement this morning. Uh, and they're giving back a little bit in the after hours, but all in all looking pretty good out there for those. All right, that's it for our opening segment. We come back. Um, I've got Tom out in Fort Lauderdale asked me, can you give me your thoughts on currencies you like? You left that really open-ended, Tom. I don't really know where to go there, so I'll dive into some of those. Uh, for anybody who's following the news, there was a major announcement today, which is probably the most major announcement of the day. I know TJ is probably uh, celebrating this. There has been a, a film icon who has quietly disappeared from the movie scene. He is a star of movies like Spaceballs and Ghostbusters and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Rick Moranis just disappeared off the face of the planet, one of the funniest guys out there. Today, 
Yes, guys, breaking news. Forget about trade wars, forget about coronavirus, forget about any disputes Iran with nuclear weapons. This is groundbreaking news. Rick Moranis is back. He is coming back to do a reboot of a movie. I, I was super excited until I realized he's gonna do a reboot of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I was really waiting for Lord Helmet to come back and have Spaceballs 2, the sequel, or something like that, or Ghostbusters 17, but lo and behold, no, but there you go. Thought I'd enlighten you with a little bit of fun stuff as we close our opening segment. Back to reality, we'll talk about financial markets. I've got a lot of Forex questions. I had some with futures contracts from Sarah in San Francisco again, so we'll look at that. If you have something specific that you want me to talk about today, let me know what it is, because I am, as you can see, all alone in studio today. I have no guests scheduled, so it will be all me answering your questions. Send them on in at powertradingradio.com or go to our YouTube channels, broadcasting under Online Trading Academy, as well as Power Trading Radio's YouTube channel. We'll be right back after a short break. What if you knew the income strategies professional investors used? The strategies designed to generate active income from the financial markets. After all, no one's going to care more about your money than you. I learned that I can be in control of my 401k. I used to work for money, now I have my money working for me. With the right training and guidance, you can learn the skills to become a more confident investor and make your money work harder for you. Want to find out what's possible for you? You can, as long as you're willing to take the first step and call OTA today. Call for your free tickets right now, and you'll also receive a free professional insider's kit loaded with lessons from some of our top instructors on topics like enhancing your retirement strategy, capital preservation, and income generation. The Professional's Insider Kit makes it so you can get started right now. Call 888-304-8723 or visit us online at tradingacademy.com and schedule your free class today. Click is something I wish I had when I started because it facilitates the learning process a lot quicker. This is not about taking many trades, it's about taking the right trade. It helps me save myself from myself. It's just a revolutionary educational tool. It propels you through the learning curve. The biggest shock for me is the level of innovation that happens within the company and it's continuing. It's just perfect in this new century of trading. Everyone's on the same side, and I think that's what I love about it more than anything else. Helping each other, supporting each other, all with the same objective. Again, wonderful. There's no mountain high enough that the, the leaders in this organization won't climb for their students. They'll, they'll just never give up. It can only help. It can only make one a better trader. Gives you one of the most valuable things we all have, and that's time. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio Live with your host, Merlin Rothfeld, and today's special guest. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Training Radio. I'm Merlin Rothman. It's you for Hump Day, your Wednesday out there. I hope your Taco Tuesday was great, and I hope your Wednesday is even better. Um, we won't go into movie reboots. Of course, I would encourage you to petition your local studios and say, bring back Spaceballs 2. I want to see a Star Wars ride at Disneyland, and then I want to see a Spaceballs ride right next to it at Disneyland. Um, let's see. A couple different questions here. Uh, one that just came in from uh, Brendan. Brendan says, I've ever heard of DMI, Directional Movement or Indicator? I think it has some promise as a conf uh, confirmatory. I can't even say that word. Confirmation. I'll just say that. A trend confirmation tool because I can't say confirmatory or confirm. Uh, it's, that's just out of my, out of my league. Uh, I'm looking for ways to keep myself more objective in rules. So, Yes, have heard of it. Uh, there are a lot of these different types of momentum indicators. You can look at things like MACD, you can look at DMI, ADX. Um, all they are designed to do is be a decision support tool, right? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like saying on my truck, I have a Toyota, uh, Toyota Tundra, uh, Toyota, I had a Toyota Tundra, now I have a Toyota Tacoma. That's a tongue twister. Uh, so on my Tacoma, I have this little thing on my mirrors that if I want, I can turn it on. It's basically lane assist, so it will let me know if someone's in that lane. Well. Really, the way you find out if someone's in that lane is you do what you were taught to do, which is just look over your shoulder, see that someone's there, and you realize, okay, no. But if for some reason you got too much going on and you want that decision support, I have this little thing, it'll beep, 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 beep on the side of my mirrors if I want it on. To me, that's what these indicators are. So basically what they're saying is you need to either stay long on the trade or short on the trade, but most of them are using historical data. This is the key. They're using back data 
usually a 14 period or depending on which indicator it is, 14 is kind of the norm, and using that old data. So you can understand that for the indicator to come up with a result to give you its indication, whether you should be staying long or short or being bullish or bearish, it is using old data, which means it is what? Lagging. It's inherently lagging. So please don't rely on them, but could they be used as something that says, hey, it's helping me get in or out of a trade? Yes, it could be a confirmation type of tool. I'll give you an example. Um, here is crude oil. T just got click up here and click has DMI in it. So you'd go to your settings panel within the click program, go up to studies uh, and you'll see there's a ton of different indicators there. I know it may be uh, hard for some of you at home to read, but uh, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. And here's DMI. You can simply double click on it. You can change your color configuration. So I'll make our, um, I'll make positive DMI like a purple a really dark color there, and I'll make this one, uh, I don't know, I, I'm colorblind, so it's really a challenge for me. I, I'm going to make that green, I guess. Is that green, TJ? Uh, whatever, whatever color that is. <laughs> uh, so there we go. So we'll throw this on the chart, and really all it's telling you is really kind of the momentum of the up moves versus the down moves, and kind of how this is transpiring right now. So if you look at this, during this whole downtrend, that we had starting on crude oil way back on the January 8th, we can actually say it was January 7th, you can see that there was a separation. It actually told you to exit your long position when the positive DMI crosses below the negative DMI. That's right where this cursor is. So you can see kind of the problem here. If you were in this, it told you to get out at, uh, let's see, it would have been the next day, so it told you to get out at $58.13. But you can see that on this big down day, you should have been out at 61.35 as it broke through some lows. So it's lagging. It's going to get you out of position late. Now, when the negative DMI rallies above the positive DMI, that's a sign to exit your um, long positions and potentially go short. You'll notice right here that it told you to go short this day. And you're probably thinking, that's great. That's awesome. I'm going to have TJ put a line on there where it crossed. Remember, it's not, you're not going to get it right as it crosses because it takes the next bar to confirm. You would have probably gotten short right where this horizontal blue line that TJ just drew on the chart is. Okay? Now, if you're following DMI by itself, what it, where is it going to tell you to get out? I mentioned it's, gonna, it's telling you to get out when the positive DMI crosses the negative DMI. And you see that they haven't crossed yet. Well, prices are rallying. So what will probably happen is somewhere up about here, if it gets to this point, right about, let's say, why is it not clicking? There we go. Uh, right about, let's call it 54.40, it'll tell, these two lines will cross, and it'll say get out. You see the problem I have with this, guys? It's actually telling you to get out of something very late after it's already moved. So if you were more of a technical person, you would have seen this double bottom coming. You're right, we talked about it yesterday. If you were short this, a double bottom is a sign that, you know what, I should probably move my stop losses down somewhere way below this $54 mark to lock in more profit. I'd probably move my stop loss down to about $52.50. If it breaks that, I'm locking in more. So these indicators, while they're nice and visual and give you rules and structure, they're late. If you use them, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, and of course, we can tweak these. This one right now is set at a 14 period. We could change it to a the seven. Then you start to change the dynamics of it. Remember, one of the reasons why these things work, right? MACD, DMI, ADX, CCI, RSI, stochastics, all these different indicators, and as TJ will point out here, there are hundreds of them. Uh, within Click, there's not hundreds. We don't want to have that many in there, but there's definitely a good amount. All of these are using some combination of data to extrapolate a result that we're going to now use potentially as an odds enhancer. They're all lagging. Now, what you should be doing if you are using any of these is I would recommend you keep them at the defaults. Why? Because the vast majority of the world is using defaults. They're not tweaking these. So part of the reason we like to use these indicators is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You have uh, people all around the world are using them. So if someone's using the DMI and they get the buy and sell signals, uh, you would want to be using the same signals because now you can see what the retail investor is going to do. All right. So there you go, Brendan. That's your answer for DMI. Uh, there are a lot of them. I, I think that there is some merit to it. I think that there is some... Uh, benefit to indicators, but as to me, it's got to be a distant, distant secondary tool, right? Number one is what's price doing. Number two, I would say let's run through the odds enhancers, which is that list that we have in, in Core Strategy, which says here are 10 to 15 different things I'm looking at to help qualify that level, not be arbitrary and say, okay, I think it's going to turn here. That's too subjective. Why do I think it's going to turn? Well, let me run through this checklist and evaluate and grade them all and now see what that result is. Not that a, a demand zone is guaranteed to hold, but the more factors that line up and point to that thing holding based off of what we've seen in the past, 
the better the chances are of it holding. So if we're right, great. If we're wrong, we have a stop loss that takes us out for a small loss. So you could add in those things. Um, you use core strategy for the entry, exit decision, and confirmation trends. Um, yes, confirmation of the trend. Once you're in, I think that it's good. You know, one, I, I wouldn't buy into it with the DMI because you'd be late, right? You, you want to buy in because of supply and demand zones. That's supply and demand zones are kind of what help you pick the tops and bottoms. I know we hate you saying that picking the tops and bottoms, but you're you're finding it where price has turned. So you're going to be in in theory, where price is turning, not after its turn and move five or six candles out of that zone and lift a lot, left a lot of money on the table before you finally jump in. Does that make sense? That's, that's the main reason why we're such, um, we're not, I might say we're anti-indicators. They are good for a purpose, and that is supporting the trade once you have made the decision to get in. And I do believe getting out should not be left to the indicators as well. Um, there are some strategies, certainly the things that we use in Strategic Investor, where we are using these indicators as triggers for longer term investments, and that's okay. But if you're a shorter term guy, you don't want to leave that kind of money on the table. All right, I think I, I covered that one in detail. Um, Sarah in San Francisco, yesterday you asked about uh, the perf chart. So we walked through an example where we went through eight of the different market sectors of the S&P 500, and Sarah was saying, look, I, um, I couldn't get the perf chart to work for futures contracts. How do you do that? Uh, that's going to be predominantly stocks, mutual funds, right, and ETFs. So futures contracts probably not going to be on there. You'd have to use a different source. Um, I have a source for you. Unfortunately, it's not as visual. Like I love those performance charts where you can see visually how things line up. There is one, if you are a futures trader, that's actually pretty useful, at least in understanding relationships, right? One of the things we, we want to understand is, what are those historical relationships between asset A and asset B? If we know that there's a direct 100% inverse relationship, well, now I can evaluate and say, well, if asset A goes up, then I'm looking to go short asset B. And I can maybe hedge or find better opportunities there with those different um, uh, variables. So if you go to, um, it's MRCI, it's more research has one that I know a lot of futures traders are using. They have a, uh, a table. It's not a chart. It, it's not very appealing visually, but it will help you. So I'm going to have TJ walk you through this one. I asked him to set up earlier. So let's see if he can go to more research, which is MRCI.com. Uh, there's a lot of free stuff out here. Of course, they want you to buy all kinds of things. I just like to use the free things. That's just the way I am. If you scroll down on the left-hand side, you see it says free links, and you see one here that says da -da -da, free futures research. There's a lot of stuff here. I'm not diving into that rabbit hole right now, but we'll just stay with the free research. You'll see here one says intermarket correlations. So you can click on intermarket correlations, and this is going to be very hard for y'all at home to see, so I'm just going to zoom in very quickly on a small portion, okay? There, oh, let's see, that's what TJ likes to do. He's good. Um, you guys can see that we have the different futures contracts. So obviously the YM is the Dow. And if you want to see how the Dow relates to the Euro, well, you would go down this column here at the YM, scroll all the way down to, you see the UH, right, which is your Euro. Uh, oops. And you'll see it's a negative 56% relationship. So it's, it's pretty inversely related. Well, the Dow to the Japanese Yen is 85% inversely related inversely related. So these are just simple things you can use to find out how those relationships work, not necessarily measure performance over time. Unfortunately, that's a little bit um, tricky there. You might be able to do it with some other platforms. It's something that we're actually trying to work into. Click would be taking tables like this and allow you to take all different asset classes and do a, a perf chart like we saw yesterday. For those that may not have been on yesterday's show, this is what a perf chart would look like, where you can take all your different components whether it's mutual funds, ETFs, I uh, would love to have where you could put futures and commodities and things like that, and see the relative performance amongst that basket that you've created. This is great for portfolio analysis. For those of you who have 401ks and IRAs, it's a very helpful tool, especially when you're looking for candidates to potentially go long or short on, right? So for example, we've got this um, great uh, perf chart right now. This bottom one, the only one that's down for the last 200 days out of these eight that we have on the screen is energy. Uh, it, should, it should pop. Ooh, there we go. Energy uh, down about, oh, let's see how far are we down? 13% in the last 200 days. Everything else is rocking the upside. So it almost makes me feel like if this market starts to sell off, which one do you think is going to have the biggest fall? The one that's already weak. It's already weak for a reason. So there's ways that we can trade this and ways that we can use different information to find not only long-term investments for our 401ks and our IRAs, but also trading opportunities intraday. For example, um, we went out here and we looked at technology. That's the biggest gainer that we saw over the last 200 days, up over 29%. What we could do is if I wanted, I could go find XLK. I could do a search for XLK, 
find out the, the components of XLK, right? There's probably 30, probably 30 or 40 different components. Then I could put those components in here and track which of XLK is bringing it up the most and which ones are dragging it down so that I could potentially find shorting opportunities and long opportunities within that basket that's been performing so well. All right, hopefully that helped out there, Sarah. Uh, I've got a couple questions when we come back. Not about Rick Moranis. I'm sure we're going to get some feedback on Rick Moranis. Uh, but I've got, I'm going to do some Forex stuff on our next segment. I've got questions about an open-ended question from Tom in Fort Lauderdale. Can you give me some thoughts on the currencies that you like? I like money, Tom. That's pretty much what it is. So I will give you some uh, of my feedback. Of course, that's just my opinion. I have guests on the program all the time. Of course, I've got Gaier who thinks the Norwegian kroner South African Rand is the best currency in the world. Uh, we'll look at that when we come back after a quick break. If you have questions, feel free to send those on in like Brendan did by power blasting those or go to our YouTube channels. We're broadcasting right now live on Online Trading Academy's YouTube page as well as Power Trading Radio. We'll be right back after a short break. Learning this way is fine when the stakes are low. But when the stakes are high, you need to rely on skill, not just knowledge. At Online Trading Academy, you build your skill one step at a time. We teach our students to trade and invest with a strategy, not a hunch. You learn our methodology, then practice it. You get to make mistakes and ask questions and watch instructors make live trades. Develop your skill the right way. Meet Mac. As a trader, he liked the signals that came from technical analysis tools, but they didn't help him find the best trades consistently, so he searched for a new approach. Mac attended Online Trading Academy's free class and discovered their core strategy, a trading methodology that spots when big banks are likely buying and selling, so everyday investors can too. Mac carved out a path to trade and invest with confidence, and so can you. Call 888-304-8723 or visit us online at tradingacademy.com and schedule your free class today. You're listening to Power Trading Radio live. Watch the show live or on the archive at powertradingradio.com and YouTube. Or download the podcast from iTunes or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Training Radio. It is your Wednesday edition. My name is Merlin Rothfeld, here to field your questions and hopefully give you guys some insights into these markets and just information that may fill the void out there. Um, let's see. I had a question from Mark on, on the Trading Academy's YouTube page. He says, Merlin, is it worth it to trade options on Forex? Personally, no. I don't believe so. Um, it's not as liquid of a market as you might think. When we talk options, there's a blanket assessment that we all come to, right? Which is, well, options are options, right? Trading in options on Forex is just the same as trading in options on the SPY. Not true. Uh, they're generally kind of a fragmented market. And from my understanding, most of the time, it's the Forex broker who's offering the margins on Forex. That gets a little tricky. Because remember, it's, a, it's not a centralized market when you're dealing with spot Forex. We've had some viewers talk about how they've had issues on fills and slippage and weird prints happen because it's not centralized. So I personally would say no. Uh, I, I can say that I don't know any of my colleagues directly that I've asked that would trade options on Forex. It's hard to find someone that ha offers the options on Forex. And personally, I just wouldn't trust it. And why? I don't think you need that kind of leverage. You're already in an asset class that in the US is giving you 50 to 1 leverage. Why do you need the options for it? You know, I would just say go with the spot. So uh, that's my two cents on it. Um, I probably would just not even bother. You know, there's always some new asset class being created and some new instrument that they're trying to get people into. It used to be single stock futures and all these different things. Go with where there's activity, where most of the people are trading, because when you have most of the people, that's where you start to get those, I hate to use the word predictable, but the, the activity become somewhat patterned, right? We can understand the behaviors of retail investors and institutional investors by what they do normally. In thin, thinly traded markets, hard to find that stuff. Uh, I saw another question in here that says, uh, <laughs> Gaier, I love you, he says, Viva British Pound, South African Rand. <laughs> uh, let's see, there was a question that asked, oh, where did it go? I got too many things out there. They got too much, too much discussion going on. Uh, there we go, uh, Jorge says, Hi, Merlin. You said Marlin. I'm not a fish. Merlin, I'm a magician. I'm not Marilyn. I'm not going to stand on a red grate in Chicago with a red dress on as the subway goes by and let it fly. Merlin like the magician. Uh, how do you see the after hours market in Forex? You automatically see that. If you're, a, if you're trading spot Forex and you're with Oanda, what you see is the 24 hour chart. Uh, when you have a Forex account, you're always seeing the after hours. The difference is this uh, TJ, bring up, uh, bring up Click. Uh, this is going to be a good example for you. 
with the equity markets we normally don't see after our session. So let me start off by going back to the very beginning. I will have TJ turn off 24 hour extended hour sessions. And now you guys can see, slowly as we load up here, um, you'll see right up from opening to close during regular market hours, right? These are regular market hours. There is no after hours trading on this chart. So let's go to, uh, what was, who reported after? Shopify. Uh, we had Shopify report earnings. So we'll bring up Shopify to give you an example of what that might look like. S-H-O-P. Okay, here's Shopify. So here's what Shopify looks like today, right? You had this nice big gap up and pretty much sold off all day based off its earnings. But what we know is where TJ has his cursor here, something happened in between that. What retail investors see is this picture right here. They do not see the after hours trading. So what, what's great about having direct access or something like Click is you can simply go in here, you can go into chart settings, and this is why you want to have direct access or a more advanced platform. You click extended hours, and I'll put session breaks, so we can see those in there. Hit OK, and now all of a sudden, I can see this area right here where you see this big spike up, that is potentially tradable if you have the right tools, if you have direct access. The retail investor doesn't see that, so you're going to need to turn that on. Remember, Forex doesn't really close except on the weekends. So you're not worried about having 24-hour trading. Your charts will be 24 hours, Jorge. There you go. Serge, uh, Siraj says, hello, Merlin. Hello, Siraj. Hope you're doing good out there. Um, OK, Siraj says, what book do you recommend to understand uh, commodity seasonality? Uh, uh, I would say that the one book I think is great is called The Stock Trader's Almanac, or there's a Commodities Trader's Almanac as well. This kind of piggybacks off a question from Damien. Uh, Damien was saying, look, I use Finviz charts for a bunch of research, and they have uh, lines on their charts that says, the lines show long, clear trends. The participants are usually on the opposite side of the trades. He talks about institutionals versus hedgers. This is called the Commitment of Traders Report, the COT. Uh, we don't really talk too much about that. If you'd like to know more about that, and this will probably help you out as well, as Siraj uh, and Damien, if you go to, um, where's that going to be at, TJ? Is that tradingacademy.com? Go to tradingacademy.com. There you go. So if you guys go to tradingacademy.com, I would encourage you to read this. Don Dawson is one of the best in the business at this. Uh, here is the homepage of tradingacademy.com. If you go under tools, you'll see there's a thing called lessons from the pros. So you click on that one, and every week there's a new issue comes out. That I encourage you guys all to use this resource, share it. There's great information here. You can see this week we've got Dr. Woody Johnson, we've got uh, Gabe Velasquez and Mike McMahon all doing articles, but it rotates. If you go to the archives and you type in um, commodity, so we'll go commodity, um, what, what, what I'm trying to get, it was the, um, commit, sorry, commitment. <laughs> I'll type in commitment there. Hopefully, I spelled it correctly. The first one that pops up is uh, Relentless Commitment and Relentless Traders. There's an article from Don Dawson. Oh, it's not going to show up here. There it is. Second one, January 21st, 2014, The Commitment of Traders Disaggregated Report. This is one that was done by Don Dawson. And if you scroll down here, it, it does explain how to read this, what it means, the different participants out there, how it functions, uh, the commercials, non commercials the speculators. To me, this is a great resource for you if you want to know more about commitment of traders, but there you go. Uh, hopefully I killed two birds with one stone. Thank you, Nick, for the question, and thank you, uh, Siraj. All right. Uh, I mentioned that we need to talk about Forex out there, because I, I have a couple minutes left here before the clock runs dry, and I'm already told I need to keep moving. So let's, um, Tom out in Fort Lauderdale says, you can give me your thoughts on currencies you like. I will tell you that there, right now I only have my eyes on three from trend perspective. Everything else seems to be chopping. Uh, the number, the, the first one there would be USD JPY. So TJ will bring up the Japanese yen here. You guys can see that it's been doing what? It's been making these aggressive spikes down, but they've almost always been higher. So I'm looking to go long on USD JPY simply because the trend since August has been series of higher highs, higher lows. It's just about to come into a supply level, so that may be a shorting opportunity. Uh, you'll notice there are some supply levels above, which could be problematic. But if we get above this most recent one, uh, I think you see some nice upside. So that's one I'm bullish on. Next one, uh, I'm, the next two I'm bearish. AUD USD, which looks pretty much like the euro. Here's the Aussie dollar. Again, similar picture. What's the trend been like? It's been pretty much down, so I'm, I'm bearish on it. I'm looking for shorting opportunities. Now, the tricky one, Euro USD. So I think the euro is 
in a world of hurt. I think the Euro has a ton of problems going on. I think Brexit is going to be a punch across the face for the Euro. I also think that their economy is starting to slow down. Some of the data that came out yesterday and today was not so good. Industrial production for the European Union slowed from 1.8 negative to 2.1 negative. You've got the 10-year, uh, the Bund, dropping to negative 0.38. So we're seeing more negative yields out there. Not good. So I'm actually bearish on this one. However, you see the trend, you know on my talk track here, I'm bearish, but look at the acceleration over the past two weeks. This has been a huge move down for the Euro. I, I, it's just real aggressive, very, very quick. I actually have an order to go long right now. I'm waiting for this one to hit. It came within just a few pips uh, of my entry today. Uh, the, you'll notice the numbers on the screen here. I have a long trade set up at 1.0860. The stop loss, which I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit to find, uh, the stop loss, it's, it's kind of overlapping because of these icons on the side. I apologize for that. Uh, stop loss there is 1.0839. That is a 21 pip stop loss. And the target, as you can see, is a little bit higher up here. You're looking at about a 55 pip target at 1.0915. I do think you're headed for a bounce. And this is that proverbial catching the falling knife where everybody is panicking right now with this euro. You can see a lot of pain in the streets on this one. It's coming right back into a demand zone that goes back a couple of years. I like this one. I really think that uh, the demand zone is pretty good. Uh, I'll let you guys look at it, but you guys can see this. It, it see, may seem like a long time ago. It goes all the way back into 2017 for this demand zone, but that's what this trade is based off of. It's one of those ones, if it starts to get a good bounce to it, uh, it could actually rip right back up above this 1.09, which, of course, we'd have to modify our trade uh, and do a little bit more trade management to keep us in that trade even longer. But that's what I'm looking at right now with that Euro USD. So you asked which ones I like. Um, Heath asked, can you give me your thoughts, Euro long or short? Overall, I'm, I'm bearish. I think you should be going short, but I do think that there's a time where those sell-offs become overdone. It, it oversold right into a demand zone. Those are the opportunities we're looking for. I'm looking for stocks that have ripped super aggressively right into a supply zone. Unfortunately, with the indexes, we don't have that right now. We've got no supply ahead, so it makes it real challenging. This is a good one because not only is it selling off aggressively, it came right back into a pretty strong demand zone from years back. And yes, it still is important from years back. Okay, uh, sorry guys, I didn't get a chance to read through a bunch of your uh, questions out there. I know you guys are very active out there. My apologies, you know, it's a tough part about doing the show solo sometimes. I just kind of get to um, uh, ramble and uh, hopefully today was something that uh, you guys found enjoyable. Brendan, I didn't get to your, uh, your question on your, the hit to your account. I'm going to have to do that one tomorrow. Well, you know what? Forget it. I'll do it right now. Uh, Brendan sent this question. He's like, look, I got hit today on two stocks. Two things happened. One uh, was a medical device company that revised that was revised great announcement uh, on a gold mine, and then one was a recall of a medical device. That's one reason why I don't trade biotechs or pharmaceuticals. You guys heard me say that all the time. Why? Because that garbage. All of a sudden, it's one of those things can happen, that thing drops 80, 90%, and you're going, wah, brutal. So I just removed those from my watch list. I got plenty of other opportunities. The gold mine one's a little bit different. Um, how do you protect yourself against it? You really can't. I mean, you understand that. You can put a stop loss in the system, but if something gaps so quickly because it's halted or has an announcement, it could blow right through your stop. Uh, those are the ones that we put ourselves at risk by trading those specific securities, which is normally why when you go into something like Strategic Investor, we're saying, hey, we don't want to be in anything like that. We want to be in diversified instruments. We'll talk about ETFs and SPY and in different diversified baskets so that if one component happens to drop 80%, it's not going to kill that ETF. So it really has to do with our risk profile. Brendan and others I know are very, very risk prone. You like taking risk. That's the nature of the beast. That stuff's just going to kind of happen. It's unfortunate it hits you today twice. Uh, that, that's pretty darn bad. But really, there's not much you can do about it other than set your stop losses and know that it's going to happen. Not only will that happen, but you're going to have the other side too, my friend, which is all of a sudden you have these huge colossal winners that were way past what you thought because they have a new drug approval or something. Great, you're going to have those too, but when you trade, if you look at trading styles, Brendan, you know you like to juggle chainsaws. You're taking the risks. You like that stuff. It's okay, but you have to know you're going to take some shots. You're going to get some something to go way against you and just kill you. You're also going to have those ones that are just phenomenal and reward you handsomely. Most people aren't taking those that spectrum of risk. They're going to whittle that down and be somewhere in between where they're taking some risk, but not letting uh, overexposure to a specific pharmaceutical or a thinly traded stock or a drug stock or anything that could be very, very high risk. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast when you trade those types of securities. And it's the market period, right? Anything can happen, like Sprint yesterday. I mean, that was kind of, people kind of knew that may have been coming, but that announcement, I'm telling you what, if you were short Sprint yesterday, you might have lost every single thing that you had. Okay. 
Uh, TJ had the economic announcements up there. What I'll do is I will give a nice gratuitous plug for a couple different things. Number one, uh, I want to remind you guys to go to my OTA. If you're an online training academy graduate and you have not yet seen y'all's announcement, I encourage you to do so. It has to do with joining the fight. Oh yes, I was going to do the whole show with gloves on today, but you know what? I think this is more like a bare knuckle brawl that we're going to be facing. Uh, I would encourage you to go to Ayal's webinar tonight. That's through my OTA. Go down the right hand side. You'll see it listed over there. Just click on that one. It starts at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So for those of you on the East Coast, just finished dinner, sit down, enjoy the presentation. You'll get to see uh, some very interesting news as well as some click announcements, which I'm sure are going to just floor you guys. You're going to love it. Uh, join that one. It's really, really important that you do so you understand where we stand now uh, and where we might be headed here going forward. The other side of this is if you'd like to learn more about stocks, options, futures, forex, commodities, uh, anything to do with financial instruments and learn how these markets truly work, we'd encourage you to click that link uh, at powertradingradio.com. It just says free class. You click on that one. You type in your zip code to tell you which center is nearest you. Each one of those centers has free classes, paid classes, community events, and much, much more, all designed with the tools, resources, and community to help you understand how to take these financial markets and put them to your advantage. There was a question earlier uh, from a gentleman that just popped into my head because I'm random like that sometimes. I was asking uh, what courses does, I think you said, what courses the New Jersey Center offer? I think that was uh, Redneck. I think you asked that one. Um, that's way back there. Unfortunately, I, I, there we go. What kind of classes does your New Jersey facility have? All of them. So all 48 of our campuses, they all teach the same classes. Instructors will travel around the world, right? We've got we've had over 100 instructors uh, who have all been uh, trading actively for a long time. They will go through and move from center to center and center and teach these various classes, whether that's Forex, Futures, Commodities. If you don't want to go to the physical center, you can take classes online. And most of my time lately has been spent building self-paced content. We now have Core Strategy on demand. You can watch it from your phone. You can watch from any device as long as you have streaming internet. Uh, we also have Futures on demand is now done and we'll have Strategic Investor here done in the next couple of months. So we're going to have more and more content available for those of you in remote locations which can't go to a physical center. Okay, that said, I was going to go to a break, but I look at the clock and I'm way past time. So we will go to your economic calendar for Thursday, the 13th of February. Thank goodness it's not on a Friday. But hey, guys, don't forget roses for your girls out there. Let's all fall for that propaganda holiday that makes us force our loved ones, uh, force love our loved ones. How about that? U.S. dollar has unemployment claims, natural gas storage, and core CPI numbers. Of course, that is regular CPI as well. For the euro, you have German preliminary GDP and business NZ Manufacturing Index for New Zealand. All right, let's go to our earnings calendar for Thursday. See what we've got. We've got some good names out there. We've got some stuff cooking. We've got uh, Lindy PLC, Fidelity National, Zoits. I know that's not how you say it, but I'm a Scooby Doo fan from a long time ago, so that will always be Zoits to me. Zoits! TC Energy, Republic Services, you have AIG, uh, Waste Management, Applied Materials, Duke Energy, NVIDIA will probably be the popcorn trade of the day, so let's, we'll, we'll watch that one on the show tomorrow. That's going to be nuts after hours. It could move 100 points in no time at all. You also have, uh, I believe, Pep Boys, or Pepsi, excuse me, PEP, and Alibaba reporting earnings tomorrow. For the uh, guest tomorrow, well, I'll tell you what, we've got Paul Orm on the program. I finally have a guest. It's awesome. I'm not alone in studio again. So we're going to have Paul Orm on the show talking about proactive investing long term. Uh, sorry, I say strategic investor. I got to get that out of my head. I will be talking strategic investors, so it'll be a, a more structured show tomorrow. We'll talk about the long-term stuff. So if you have any long-term positions, you're curious about your 401k or IRA, just have some ideas or thoughts, bounce them off of us. Throw them in at powertradingradio.com. Click the button that says Power Blast. You can send your questions to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you can also click the like button if you like today's show or the content on our YouTube channels. That really helps us out as well. Send in your comments and questions, and find out more about Online Trading Academy at powertradingradio.com. Until then, happy trading, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. You're listening to Power Trading Radio live. Watch the show live or on the archive at powertradingradio.com and YouTube. Or download the podcast from iTunes or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded.